It's 3.50 a.m. in fabulous Las Vegas, Nevada, and you're listening to Night Call. Hello and welcome to another Night Call. My name is Emily Oshida. I am in New York and with me on the other line and on the other coast, I have Tess Lynch and Molly Lambert. And give us a call. Uh, give us your night call at 24046 night. Share your thoughts, your feelings, uh, any questions you may have for us on these strange days and lonely nights. You can also send us an email at nightcallpodcast at gmail.com. And yeah, tell, t- tell us what's on your mind. So what's on your guys' mind tonight? Uh, it, I feel like it's been a while since we last spoke because it actually has been, even though the pods keep a coming. But <laughs> my head is like a balloon today. Hey, that mine is like too. Floating away from my body. <laughs> and why could that be, Molly? Because uh, I went to Las Vegas with Emily. Woo! Yeah, Ooh. we 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 spent some good time in Las Vegas. I would say it's a pretty successful trip. Um, it was very successful in that I was so ready to get out of Las Vegas on day three. I was like, I need to escape. And uh, then it, by the time I was on the plane, I was already like, what a great trip. <laughs> That's that good. was fun. <laughs> if you can have nostalgia for the thing during the thing. Um, <laughs> yeah, we uh, we went, I guess we, we we got there. It wasn't even quite a weekend, but it felt like we a got mob on, scene. Yeah, we got there on Thursday. We thought, yeah. okay, so here's what we thought. We thought we were picking like a dead weekend that nobody would be there because it's like the middle of March and who's in Las Vegas and we picked like you can't a even Thursday. sit by the pool. Like, what's the point? <laughs> yeah, we were like, it's the pre-summer rush. There's like no holidays. Turns out, hmm. a it was St. Patrick's Day on Which, Saturday. Who who among us could have ever known when St. Patrick's <laughs> Day is? That's not on my calendar. Uh-huh. <laughs> and B, it was March Madness yes. weekend, which none of us even knew existed because. Uh, it's not like we worked at ESPN for several years. No. And you haven't gone mad. What's Would've that? Known. I don't have ESPN. Uh. <laughs> um, we were so like, what is this? And then we were like, oh, no. <laughs> All the dads it was a, it was a in the world have convened I, in Las Vegas. I have never seen so many men in my whole life. Wait, so they I want to, before we get into like the the the, the full rundown of the trip, I want to like, one of my early observations, because I got there a day early and I spent a, a night uh, at the Palms, uh, and this was just off strip. But like, if anybody watched any MTV reality show at any point in the 2000s, they know the Palms because I feel like there was always like people partying at Ghost Bar or whatever. It was like the <laughs> aughts hangout for the cast of The Hills and Paris Hilton and everybody. Um, and now, I mean, they're in the middle of this huge overhaul, so it's sort of sad. It's been all ripped up. Um, but I, uh, but now it just kind of feels, it's halfway there to its, 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 its um, remodeling, but it's also now just an aughts-themed casino. Like, Yeah, you were sending these like really sad pictures of like Dave Navarro. Yeah. Just like... <laughs> You were saying it's like they're halfway through trying to turn it over from being the 2000s place, but they still have all the 2000s people in yeah. like huge billboards on the walls. Yeah, there's this walkway, the sky tube to like their fancier hotel Palms Place. And it's just these huge murals of like Alicia Keys and Dave Navarro and the cast of Entourage and stuff. And it's just That's like such a weird Motley crew. It's so strange. <laughs> such a bad thing. And like, yeah. And then like Nelly, I think, is in there in the mix. Love too. Nelly. It's just it's 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 very very evocative. I mean, I spent, I had like a very memorable experience at the Palms in like 2010, probably at the very last year that it was like super the spot to be. And I was a little sad to see it all ripped up and unrecognizable because uh, I had, I had, I had some good times at the Palms in my day, but uh, yeah, I, it, it was, it was, it was, uh, it's, it's a theme. It's a theme hotel of its own now. Yeah. It's the theme is uh Death and resurrection. Oh, the other thing is that Adrian Maloof, I don't think, own, or her family doesn't have any ownership over it anymore. Like, the Maloof name is no longer on it. Um, oh, really? I don't think. Uh, I think they got bought by, like, the people who own the station, the uh, Palace Station, I think, or Sunset Station. I can't remember. 
Anyway, I know too much about Vegas casinos. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing about Vegas casinos is don't ever get attached to anything yeah. about any oh, of them no. because that is their their uh, reality. Wouldn't their- that be so sad if you made a habit of getting attached to Vegas well, casinos? Uh, here's what I keep saying <laughs> is like a really smart person, if they were going to open another casino, um, if they want to make a night call casino in old Las Vegas, because like the best casinos are the ones that are still feel a little old and weird to me, to mm-hmm. me. Um, and that's why I like like the old strip with like the Fremont Street casinos because mm-hmm. they are a little like older and sleazier and yeah. own it, whereas the new ones are like new and sleazy and have like are so characterless in the same way. Um, or they're trying, a they have boring. like a forced character, like yeah, like but, cosmopolitan. Like, but if they didn't blow everything up all the time and they had let some of the '60s stuff exist long enough to still exist, it would be so popular yeah, now. It's you true. Know? Retro casino, right? Like if there was like a Sands, like a you know, oh, re- rebuild the original Sands and make like a Rat Pack themed casino, people would fucking love that. Yeah. Especially as like the next phase now that like the EDM. Uh, phase of Las Vegas is maybe on its way out, I guess. Oh, I think it is. It's peaked. I think this is maybe a separate discussion for another day, but I think there were certainly in the twilight of of the EDM, like the Vegas EDM thing. And I wish I could write something about this. This is like something I thought was happening four (laughs) years ago, but it's just taken longer. Emily and I both also had only been to Las Vegas most recently on work trips, uh, which are a great way to go to Las Vegas. Yeah. And we both realized that that is why uh, Hunter S. Thompson went there for fear and loathing is because it's like the place you can scam people into letting you go. Oh yeah. Um, Um, (laughs) yeah. Um, well, but so, also, we both were like, should we be taking notes? And then we were like, no, we're just here. Oh, we're just here for fun. I was so <laughs> sad to miss this trip. I My know. husband had work. And uh, I have we have no babysitter, yeah. which is fun to have no yeah. babysitter and just be looking at Instagram. But it was you guys did a good job of capturing it. We missed it. you very much, especially yeah. at Magic Mike. Oh, which my God. We will get to. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, yeah, we met up at the Venetian, which is where mm-hmm. where this this all took place, which I had also never been to before, which is a great, silly Las Vegas hotel with fake canals. It was very, like, floral looking. Or was that somewhere else that you guys went? Oh, that was the win. The win is, like, Rose Parade It's so pretty. Also, we should, like, do the disclaimer that all of these places are owned by the most evil men. uh, And that's just a fact of going to Vegas. It's like, you're gonna eat the the burger, and it's gonna have, like... (laughs) hooves in it um <laughs> although the win even though um win steve win is very evil um he's also a vegan he's an evil vegan oh so the burger uh, isn't the most apt uh, no uh, they have like lots of vegan options and we actually went there on uh, st patrick's day oh, because nice. it was like uh they were like my friends that were left were like uh, this one might have vegetarian options. Only the vegans remain at the end yeah. of the trip. Well, I thought that was interesting too, the evil vegans, because it's become such a trope. The like the evil billionaires and evil tech guys that are into like health and wellness yeah. and like fake into Eastern religion, you know, but are evil. And yeah. <laughs> into, um, oh, did you guys so, see that article about, um, this is totally separate, but Powder Mountain? No, is it's that like, like an one elite of the- club for like millennials who are trying to have spiritual awakenings? It's like a place to do mushrooms with billionaires. It sounds awful. It's like in, it's yeah. in Utah somewhere. Um, you should go see that. That sounds out. like my nightmare. Um, I heard that the tech yuppies have taken over Esalen, which is yeah. not super surprising. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's, that's a part of that story too. So we yeah, should I hate. Yeah. Sorry. Let's get back to last. Speaking of yeah. journeys to the inside of the self. Well, okay. So, so we mentioned that we went there during March madness and it was just this complete and total, like, when did you realize it was March Madness? Oh, uh, when I got on the plane to go to Vegas and it was all <laughs> dudes. And I texted David and I was like, I've made a horrible mistake. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I didn't even realize. Like, I, I remember when we booked it and somebody was like, oh, you know, it's going to be a busy weekend. And I was like, oh, haha, like, you know, aren't they all? Uh, but no, this was on a different level entirely. So everywhere we went, it was it was packed with dudes everywhere. Um, it was like, I can't even describe it because I've never been in that experience. I kept saying it was like we were in a zombie movie where all the women had been killed <laughs> and we were the only women left. So like every time we did see a woman, we would be like, hello. <laughs> and so this being, this was, you know, we haven't mentioned this is my bachelorette party. And so this being a special occasion, uh, I, you know, I really wanted to work some some uh, some looks or as you may pronounce them, looks. 
um, during the weekend. And uh, the first second that Molly and I stepped out to go to Walgreens to get something, it's like uh, just a bunch of guys being like, huh, interesting outfits, ladies. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, cool, I'm going to go back and I'm going to change into something even weirder. <laughs> Yeah, we kind of we kind of decided against our like hot outfits in favor of our like scary outfits yeah. because the first time we went out in our hot outfits, the men who like hit on you that are super normy and are like weird. <laughs> What's up, weirdo? <laughs> like, <laughs> uh, but yeah. So, oh, do you like books? No. <laughs> You're like, what? No, um, but we. So we had been kind of dealing with this, like guys who are just so in their zone that they, you know, don't yeah, even like hold open we, the elevator door for women. Like, oh no, we didn't exist to them. Every time no. we were in an elevator, they were having like an impassionate, you know, like did you see that play like yeah. but, like really loud like over us if we wanted to have a conversation which we weren't even trying to no. but just like it was I don't just know. They, we yeah we were completely invisible to them it was when like when you said that they were saying did you see that play my first thought was like <laughs> wow like theater nerds no see that's how divorced from march madness <laughs> no we were so divorced from it it was hilarious yeah. we were like we didn't we didn't think about it at yeah. all and then i didn't even know that it was like a thing in las vegas even though of course it is yeah but yeah, it's like the guys aren't even there to like party and get laid. They're literally just there to bet. That's oh, all they, they care about. They probably, I mean, there there's well, probably plenty of Well, they wear their like yeah. daytime visor to the casino and then yeah. they have their nighttime visor. <laughs> their sex visor. For the club. <laughs> we wore visors the whole time. I yeah. thought. Um, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, then we went to the club. We went to Hakkasan, yeah. which is the super, super club, the like three story super like club. Enormous. Where you have to, take an elevator like in the haunted mansion to get in yeah um and i emily and i both enjoy those sorts of things oh, so we yeah. enjoy edm spectacle oh and, yeah like, and i had always wanted to go there out of just like sh like sheer kind of morbid fascination with like the yeah. biggest club in vegas well yeah. the last time i went to vegas was i was profiling martin garrix superstar dj martin mm -hmm. garrix for mtv and we got to go to like a super club through like the back door entrance the goodfellas entrance and it was like the best experience of my life nice. i was just like can't be jaded about this. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is pretty cool. Although I'm sure it gets old if you're like doing it every yeah, night every if you're one night. of those DJs. Yeah. But uh, Hakkasan was like, oh, I was just like walking into a room of like testosterone yeah. poisoning. Yeah. It was like everyone was just hitting on like any woman in sight. I like felt bad for any woman who was there because it was just like that kind of getting hit on where it has just so it's so indiscriminate it's just like you okay no you yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> well uh yeah no and i and i i always try to just be like hey everybody in our group is spoken for and then somebody will make fun of me for using the turn of phrase spoken for it's just like there's no <laughs> way to have a like gracefully okay, Niles. yeah <laughs> oh, well, I'm, I'm so sorry uh we are all spoken for here um <laughs> well that was funny too because there was nobody who was single but everybody came out of it like man i'm so glad i'm not single <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> what a nightmare but so um, on our last night um we we went to uh maybe the polar op we, we had like the best palate cleanser yeah we counter programmed possible. um and well first we went to the national atomic testing museum well, there was that so we meditated we talk on, about that on death for one and second. radiation and yeah everything. we looked at um a lot of that is a great museum that I recommend to everybody, yeah. the National Atomic Testing Museum. It uh, is really scary. And the first time I went, it was before the election. Mm. So I had such a different experience of it because I was just like, wow, the 20th century was so scary. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Good thing we're existing now. I was like, oh, wait. Yeah. I yep. was like, imagine living under the like terror of nuclear threat all the time. That must have been so scary. No wonder everything got so paranoid and weird. Yeah. And then this time it was even weirder because it's a Smithsonian Museum, but the way the captions work, it's like, and then we made the bomb because we had to because yeah. of the Russian arms race. And it then it protects democracy. Yeah. Like, and then somebody's like, got to have it. They very they like don't go into Hiroshima and Nagasaki at all in terms of like what happened after you did that. Yeah. It's just like here's what it, you know. Then we made this bomb, and then we made this bomb. Uh, Wasn't it? And then at the end, it's like, and then we won the Cold War. Yeah. Ooh. <laughs> I think it was Dilcia who was saying that who had been to the the museum in in Hiroshima the about the bomb there, and it's also equally like kind of gliding over the fact that there was even a war before. 
uh, the bomb was off. It's like, you know, you get the selective story no matter where you are. If, if you're if in a museum that covers any kind of war or conflict whatsoever. Um, yeah, it definitely was a national museum. Yeah. Um, there's also like an incredible movie that I don't, Molly, you weren't in there with us, but I'm sure you saw when you were there before where it starts with a bomb countdown and then they like fill the theater with smoke and like it and like jets of air blast at you and no. and we were our nerves were so frayed because it had been like a very long night before we it's were also called the ground zero theater yes oh, it's no. called the ground zero theater and like immediately my friend who was sitting next to me just like collapsed and cowered and like went into my arms because it was like too much too much too much we can't do it <laughs> uh yeah it was it was uh it was a lot but then we we got to see the sad little collection of alien memorabilia which is which yeah was great. the alien exhibit i saw when i first went was no longer up but they had sort of like moved the remaining stuff into a sad corner which was great because <laughs> one of the things in the alien display was just the collection of vape juice that was called yeah. area 51 vape juice <laughs> in like a like- glass case in a museum <laughs> that has like the smithsonian logo outside of it there is a, well, that's a case so of funny. vape juice they divide the like the real history stuff from the Area 51 stuff, but they know that people are super interested in that also. Yeah. Um, so they a little bit cater to it because I mean, it's it's a spoonful of sugar to help the medicine go down. About it's very the interesting or- just from a point of view, too, of like, you know, because it's in Las Vegas. It's outside Las Vegas because the Nevada test site is where they tested all these yeah. atomic bombs. So yeah. it's technically a museum about that but it's you know they talk about like oh and here are the places they considered for testing the atomic bomb yeah where else new mexico Mm -hmm. and utah and i think they picked lost like nevada because there was like relatively nothing around it and then las vegas was pissed at first because they were like please don't test atomic bombs and then it was a hit it was a huge tourist draw everybody wanted to watch the bomb go off yeah and then they they pivoted to promoting it and being like Come get blown up in Las Vegas. <laughs> Which, you know, to uh, be honest, they, that's still a draw. Uh, yeah. Although now that I say that, I realize how tasteless it is because they just had a big mass shooting. So yeah, uh, they, I think sometimes, I don't know, that's what's part of weird about the sort of erasing of history in Las Vegas is yeah. that it was interesting to be there and be like, oh, like there's some like Vegas strong hashtags and stuff. But other than that, every, and there were some bomb sniffing dogs. Yeah. But other than that, it was very like business as usual. Don't think about it being scary. Here. It's so funny to me that you guys love Las Vegas because I hate Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> I truly hate Las Vegas. And my, my uncle lived there for a long, long time, which maybe is all part of why I not know my uncle was great, but like, when you live in Las Vegas. You had the experience of, like, the non-tourist. Well, yeah. I mean, and also I had, like, I just, I when you were talking about the guys going up and hitting on you and how awful they were, I was like, huh, maybe I was doing that back when I was in Vegas, where you're just like, anyone, anyone, no, anyone. No, that's, like, part of, that's part the for the Vegas. Oh, yeah, that's, that's the just thing, part of I the experience. I just felt bad for them. I wasn't, like, I no, was, like. No, no, I know. But it's, like, that weird desperate. You yeah, 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 the mode. desperate energy. I, I. I enjoy observing that. I won psycho. some money in Las Vegas the the like one time that I went there in recent memory um, because I have a rule that I can only ever gamble $20 no oh, matter yeah. what I do. I lost about 10, 10. I saw you with a voucher for 25 cents. Yeah, but I spent $5 oh, to okay. make the 25 cents. <laughs> <laughs> so it was yeah. a net loss. What's the best thing about Las Vegas? Well, okay. I think well, Emily and I probably both like it because it's like, you know, a postmodern fantasy and we like to think about it. Yeah. And, uh, I also just but, like any large machine, and when you're you're driving into Vegas and you see all the resorts, and they're just colossal. Like they're bigger than any building that you see in New York, just in terms of like the stat, like not in terms of height, but just in terms of like the mass of them. Right. It's just yeah. so it it's such an alien scale to be yeah. in, and then to think about like like cities worth of people that just work there. Um, right. It's so, and it's so far out in the desert yeah. that it has a real like space colony feeling to it. Yeah. You're like, this is how we are thinking about like how we would colonize Mars, you know, because yeah. you're like, 
what do you need and how can you make buildings that have every possible thing you could ever need in them so you never have to leave the building but then you always get that Vegas casino space madness where you're like I have to go outside yeah where night, day yeah. is night and night is day yeah. and yeah. I think that accounts I for mean, a lot of my wooziness now is just being so outside of like any kind of natural time <laughs> cycle uh, or like day cycle I don't know it's so weird um, I felt like fine on St. Patrick's Day, which was also hilarious because we were like at the end of our trip and then everybody else was like just getting there for St. Patrick's Day on Saturday, you know, so it was like. Well, you guys are also lucky that you missed the spring break crowd or maybe not. No, lucky. If that that was- would be more fun. Yeah. That yeah. would have been better than this. This was like not. There would have been more women there. <laughs> like, yeah, it this was just, that was the thing on St. Patrick's Day. I was immediately more comfortable because there were suddenly like packs of sorority girls, and I was like, "Oh, thank right. God!" You know my, what I mean? My sisters. And also, this is like, when people, else are you gonna say like think that? But then you're left with like, yeah, the- no, I was like, the bros can't exist like alone. The bros need to like rove amongst the packs of like lady bros, you know, and find each other when it was just bros and they were just like there to gamble and. That's all yeah. it was. I don't know. That was dark, maybe too dark for me. <laughs> yeah, I think. I think also another part of me being always, like drawn to Vegas from the first time I ever went there is like it's so outside of anything that I like. I would never have gone on a Vegas vacation when I was a kid. One because we wouldn't have had the money, and two because it's just like completely not um, aligned with any values I grew up with. So there is this sort of like forbidden fruit aspect of it, but like in a, not in a, like, I'm going to go and I'm going to like shower myself in champagne and do all of the debaucherous things. I'm mostly just like, what is it? Like, show me all the crazy stuff that you can do here. Beautiful lights. (laughs) We're like suckers for beautiful neon lights. I think there was that meme going around that was like about like how neon and fog is so tired. The Blade Runner, like cyberpunk aesthetic. And then it was like, all so me like ooh neon <laughs> <laughs> like a foggy neon I, I do like the neon I, I just feel like there's a certain element of like being trapped with the bad decisions you're gonna make in a big giant hotel mm-hmm. that just feels like the twilight zone that I would least like to experience but the I shinning yeah the shinning <laughs> exactly <laughs> um I'm, I mean I hated Las Vegas when I went there as a kid I went there for the first time as a kid to see a Grateful Dead concert mm-hmm. with my family during the uh, Bob Weir and Jerry Garcia were wearing shorts a lot phase. <laughs> um, and I hated Las Vegas because it was like 120 degrees. Yeah. Um, I liked the Luxor because I was into ancient Egyptian art. But, you know, I was like, I don't know. I hated it. I thought I just really hated Las Vegas. And then I went back for the first time as an adult. Uh, to AVN for Grantland, and that was the best experience of my life. And then I <laughs> um, <laughs> fell in love with Las Vegas. Well, I, oh, wait, I was gonna say we oh. should we should break and do a a question, oh, and, yeah. and then do something just on Magic Mike. I think. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. Um, Brilliant. Okay. <laughs> uh, so we'll be back with the rest of our Vegas adventure after a night call. Um, yeah, let's take a night call. Uh, who do we have? On the on the old message recorder, on the old voicemail box, we have a call from Kevin. Good evening, Night Call. Um, my name is Kevin. I'm speaking. I'm talking from Los Angeles. Um, big fan of the podcast so far. I had a question for all three of you. Um, wanted to get a sense of... Uh, any experiences that you've had in terms of deep dives, looking for stuff online, anything that has sort of inadvertently become nightmare fuel. Um, sometimes I'll spend a lot of time just doing deep dives on YouTube and then I'll come across some strange, odd video, kind of watch half of it, freak out a little bit, and then I'll kind of meditate on it and, and then dig a little bit deeper looking for related content. I just want to know if there was anything uh, in terms of what I described that you could identify in terms of your own internet or online deep dives. All right. Have a good night. Bye. Hey, Kevin, thank you so much for calling in. So we're, we, I think we are all mega deep divers. Uh-huh. Is that right? You guys, uh-huh. um, what th- this is interesting to me. So you, you kind of accidentally stumbled on something that was really creepy. And then instead of closing the window, you were like, no. Peer into the darkness. <laughs> I'm going in. My, the the one that's 
kind of like terrible catnip for me. Uh, well, there's two. And I think we'll probably have a whole episode devoted eventually to ghosts. One of them is ghost stories. But I am a I'm, I get very obsessed with medical mysteries. Um, and so I tend to go like really, really deep on those. Um, and that's a huge mistake that I <laughs> don't think anyone should do. I signed up for um, this website called CrowdMed after trying to solve several acquaintances, medical mysteries by like obsessive Googling. I got a couple solved. So then CrowdMed is basically if you have something that doctors can't figure out, you post like an exhaustive account of your symptoms and you get an anonymous handle and then um, anyone can kind of weigh in and try and solve it for you. And there's like a cash reward if they get it right, I guess. I'm not even sure how it works because I have not felt like an expert enough to actually diagnose someone. So I just <laughs> look at their problems, try and diagnose them and keep that information to myself, <laughs> which is a horrible thing to do. Um, Dr. Tuss. Dr. Tuss. But it's been, it's been super, super interesting. So that's, that's my deep dive nightmare fuel. Um, and I feel like I already know what Molly's is, but I wonder if what she's going to say. What do you think mine is? I thought it was Lotus Breast. Oh, well, I mean, you know, fear of fear of holes. Fear of holes. We've definitely it comes up on our text thread a lot. Yeah. Uh, but I'm trying to think like what a recent one is. Emily, what are yours? Well, this one, I mean, I I've been I've been watching cyst videos since the beginning. Like <laughs> Ben just freaked out. <laughs> uh, and it really has been uh, since I was in college. Uh, there's a long story that, about what what opened me to the world of cyst <laughs> videos. But I haven't oh, watched any for oh, a really long time. videos? Yeah, what? yeah. You don't know about what? this? This is like oh now, God, now this old. is legitimately no. a huge thing. Um, it's, I've like learned a lot about you also on this trip, such as that you were a hair model. Oh yeah. Really? Yes. Emily's secret history. I can see it. She's got great hair. <laughs> yeah. Great hair. <laughs> Thank she you. was like, oh, I haven't been, been to Vegas since the hair show. Oh no, I've been to Vegas since the <laughs> no, hair show. I've been to Vegas since the I hair show. I hadn't been to the like, Venetian my first since time the in hair. Vegas was for the hair show. Oh, no, it was my um, second time and it was, but it was the first time I stayed at the Venetian. It was for Intercoiffure <laughs> 2007. It was there with Adal Sassoon. It was very fun. We did a routine to the Klaxons if you want to date that. So, oh uh, man. <laughs> Dave Navarro and uh, all the palms, the palm fronds. Yeah. Um, anyway, but okay. So there's that. Uh, I mean, those you are do just cyst videos. I can't fuck with that. I at know. All. I can't. Do yeah. It. I know. It's not for everybody. Uh, I I don't want to get too much into it. I honestly haven't watched a lot. L last time I went to go see how the cyst scene on YouTube was going, it was like very, oh, very. It was extremely like curated, like all things on YouTube now. Like oh, there are yeah. doctors and dermatologists far. who have. Um, channels endorsements yeah yeah it's totally crazy like before it was There's always like just like cyst beauty bloggers yeah oh, that's so weird yeah it's crazy so like before it was just like oh my cousin has this thing on his back and we're gonna take him out back and <laughs> rip it open like i mean there was ah, <laughs> ah, i like no. how tess is horrified by that but she's like i like to google medical <laughs> mysteries <laughs> Internal medicine, Molly. I'm an internist. I'm a fake internist, not a dermatologist. <laughs> but uh, I like to read about uh, disappearances. Oh, I had one other one that because that one, like, I don't know. That's not like a really a current thing. That's just You're not something. big on that anymore. No, that was just a the scene is dead, guys. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, the one that I got into like a, a, a couple years ago is um, kids who. Like, you know, these like evangelical kids who record um, their glossolalia, um, they do their speaking in tongues like in, in like, you know, a lot of the videos would be kind of long because they have to like wait for the spirit to take them over. And then they start, right. um, you know, doing their their leaning and rocking and doing all the speaking in tongues and everything. And that can be very haunting and unsettling sometimes. Um, do you ever get too creeped out? Yeah, for sure. Like there are ones where it's like this kid is too young to be doing this on YouTube. Like it, it, there's something very like. Uh, I think we're we're all too young to oh, be doing that. You know that. what? I actually um, Molly Soda, who is an internet person I really like. She's an artist. She was posting yesterday about how like tween girls will like put up videos on YouTube of like dances they made up, and then there are all these like mean comments from adult men being Ugh. like, "You're ugly. Like this dance sucks." Ugh. And she was just like. That should be like a safe place for people. Like girls should be have a phase where they get to like make up dances where they aren't like being critiqued by men about what they don't like about it. 
I was God. I was like, she's so right. Yeah. Terrible. Um, but also like we all did that stuff. I feel like we were like eighties video cameras. Like we definitely, oh, like, I have taped one. some of that stuff. I have and- a tape of, I believe you're on it, Molly, that my, oh my parents God. sent. And I was like, Ooh, what if anyone has oh, seen no. this? <laughs> Wait, can I tell you guys? Cause Molly, I think you mentioned miss like disappearances. Yes. Um, I was, I, I did a deep dive where I was trying to see if I could find this woman who's been missing for Gosh, I mean, it must be like more than a year. Her name is Nancy, and there's a website for her called Nancy is Missing, and she has a Facebook page. She went, she has Alzheimer's, and she went missing from LACMA, and I decided to take it upon myself to try to find her, but in, like, because there's a huge homeless population, obviously, in L.A., and I was like, I'm just going to keep an eye out, but then I also started looking through um, the databases of missing people in Los Angeles, and I was doing it so much that I, like, I just feel like I maybe wanted to find, like I wanted it to happen. And so I thought I found a missing person who had gone missing near my house um, a long time ago. And I thought I found him living on the streets. And I sent my husband to, he was in a parking lot of a drugstore to go be like, Hey, we found you. Yeah. To to say his name, just to see if he responded, but, but he did respond, but then was like, it's not me. But then they ended up having this long conversation. My husband had a hard time extricating himself from, and he made me promise to, to never do that again. But I like went <laughs> so deep on it. Cause I was like, I think I could find like half these people. I've got a lot of time oh my on my God. hands. Like <laughs> you've been a detective a few times, actually. And it's always and- worked out so well. <laughs> Grace. <Smith. laughs> yeah. That's what I'm saying. You're such a Grace Smith. Yeah. Um, wow. Um, well, thank well, you so good, much for the call. Question. Um, I like Kevin's attitude also about like um, just sticking with it. And waiting for an epiphany to happen or meditating or on Or that your... you go too deep and you get spooked, yeah, yeah, which can yeah. happen. And then you meditate. By the on. way, yes. we have, we've gotten so many good night calls. Yeah. And we're, we're trying to work through all of them. It's going to take some time. But we've gotten a lot of very heartfelt um, questions and messages. And we love them. So please keep yeah. them and coming. If, and just because we don't play them doesn't mean we, we don't see them. We read them all. So know that we yeah. we've, we've uh, we see you and hear you and we uh, and and we love your emails just yeah. as much. Yes, and we're gonna get to more of them. We're, we're <laughs> going through slowly. So back to Vegas, really quickly. Um, so we mentioned it was a complete man fest the entire time we were there, and it was a little overwhelming. But on our last night, we had the palate cleanser of palate cleansers. Um, we went to Magic Mike Live. Uh, which was it? Which is the live show they've had for about a year and a half now, I think, at the Hard Rock Hotel, um, produced by I think Channing Tatum has like a producer role in it, but I could be mistaken. It's uh, uh, they sell his vodka at the bar, so he's definitely yeah, he's in it. His, his involved. He makes a voice cameo in it, um, but it is. Uh, something I kind of had to be talked into at first. You did totally have to be talked into it. Uh, you were more leaning towards the Baz Luhrmann uh, Cirque which, du Soleil live show. There is I will a totally... Baz Luhrmann like, review, which is incredible. <laughs> and I will go to that someday. But I was totally the... I am such a bro because I was the person who was like, it's your bachelorette. We're just getting strippers. Um, <laughs> <laughs> even though it's like, it's not like you're getting strippers. It's like no. you're going to a play. No. That has men dancing in it. Well, I the thing that's funny is that I w- when I came back, um, David was watching Atlanta, and I, I don't remember what it's from the new season, but there was like a scene that was in a strip club, and I was just sort of like, it's so different from like strip reviews, like male strip reviews. Like it's more like an ambiance where like a strip, like for for, for like a, a female stripper s- you know, scenario. It's like the musical cabaret. <laughs> it's like, right yeah it's not <laughs> an actual <laughs> cabaret you're, no you're in like weimar germany yeah you know um, everyone's in the club yeah um well but, they come because we were sitting in a balcony but they like came up to the balcony right so yeah it's uh first of all well okay so my uh, my i'll tell you my my reservations were just that like i love both magic mike movies a lot i think they are so fun and like very life-affirming and great I also had no interest in being one of the women in it. Like even in those like really incredibly choreographed ones, like the mirror dance at the end of magic Mike XXL. Like, I don't want to be the person who's being thrown around on a chair, like, and like, or being so made to do you this. thought. Yeah. 
<laughs> we're being made to do the split. Um, right. You don't want to get called on stage at the magic show. You're not like a volunteer. Well, I have been called on stage at a magic show. That's sort of fun. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay you're a selective volunteer. Yeah, but not where you might have to like spread eagle in front of a, a crowd or whatever. Like Again, that's. <laughs> or so you thought. Um, I was really campaigning for the magic mic show also because like three out of the five people at this bachelorette party are film critics or film programmers. And so I thought it would be funny to go to a strip show based on a Steven Soderbergh movie. Yeah. And it was, but also to encourage like more Las Vegas reviews based on Steven Soderbergh movies. <laughs> what would be the, what would be the next one? Like, uh, obviously there should oceans. be a behind the candelabra live. Oh show. my God. Yes, I would a hundred percent see that. Yeah. You would be, that would, that. that would definitely be, bring me to Vegas if I could go to. Oh okay. God. When we build, the night call casino that's the 60s themed <laughs> casino it, that will be the in-house show is the liberace behind the candelabra show oh it man it'll be amazing so uh i don't know how much we want to spoil from the magic bike show because there are some like definite surprises and this is the other thing that intrigued me about the show and kind of won me over is that on yelp people are like the Magic Mike show is so amazing. I kind of don't want to go into too much detail here because I want to like preserve the experience for people who come to see it later. So maybe like, but there is like a total, there's a fake out moment in it that like is very rewarding. Yeah, um, we were all faked out. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, but, but it has, it has this incredible female MC, which I think is like the reason so much of it works. Much she's like the reason in, it works. Yeah, much yeah. much like in Magic Mike XXL with Jada Pinkett Smith. I mean, she's not really doing the same thing as Jada Pinkett Smith, but it's just like this like female, like this like dominating female energy in the room is like what makes it was so like much of it feel fun. Been- Having been in March Madness for like the previous day, it was like the opposite. Yeah. It was like she was like, here's a space that's just for you, yeah. ladies. Yeah. Nothing is about anything but like what you're interested in and like catering to your needs. And we were all like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> the other great. Good, like great thing about it is that so many of the like when they have, you know, she does like little interactions with some of the guys and like they've all they all just like act in the cutest, like kind of dumb puppy dog way like there's yeah, this they're guy all legitimately like, hot yeah they are like waxed in some incredible way yeah <laughs> which we know because we got very up, and, up close and personal <laughs> well everybody was like you thought they'd be gross to touch but then they were kind of like very soft <laughs> who thought that they'd be sweat. gross to touch <laughs> somebody was saying that they weren't sure if they wanted to <laughs> i won't uh, out that person <laughs> Uh, yeah. but yeah, it's, it's great. Everybody around us, it was just like a room full of women. Yeah. You know, it was like, like, oh, here's where everybody is. Like it was like yeah. 10 different, I was telling David, like it, upon reflection, it was kind of like being in a big banquet hall in like Game of Thrones or something, except it was just all bridal parties and like all the yeah. different, instead of all the different houses. And so it was like, here's one, what, one group with their, like their queen and her veil. And here's the group where everybody's wearing like mass, like glittery masquerade masks. And everybody sort of gathered in the round around all the male strippers. It was very <laughs> kind of incredible. Um, yeah, you could tell who the bride, like the bride, would be wearing. Everybody was wearing like a like a slutty bride dress with like a bride sash. Yeah, you yeah. Know? And then their bridesmaids are wearing like slutty bridesmaids dresses. And, <laughs> and then all the brides are the people who got the like special dances because yeah. their parties told them in advance. And our party also told the show in advance. <laughs> uh, so they asked Emily if she wanted to come on stage, and mm-hmm. she said yes. Yeah. I mean, why wouldn't uh, and, I? <laughs> well, because you said you weren't, you didn't want to. You thought you didn't want to at all. But then they came over, and by that point, you because it was like a few numbers into the show at that yeah. point too. You knew they were going to like take care of you, and they weren't going to like. Yeah, it wasn't going to be a bad experience. It would be like a lovely and tender experience. <laughs> well, also the whole thing is so based on consent. So like they, yeah. so they came up. This guy, like not one of the dancers, just like another guy working the show, came up and like asked me would you like to go on stage for a dance? And it was like very like gentlemanly. It was like, would you care to have this dance? And I was like, would I? Like, you know, I thought about it for a second. I was like, yeah, sure. And then the whole time is that they were like bringing me down and like prepping me for what's going to go on. Like the whole thing was very like, are you okay with this? Is this, are you going to be okay doing this and this? And it was just like so gentlemanly <laughs> the entire experience. I was like, wait, so Emily, what did they do? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I got an aerialist. There we go. <laughs> she got the nine inch nails. I got the aerialist. nine inch nails, oh. which was so perfect that we were all like, "Did they? How did they know?" 
<laughs> she would get the industrial music aerialist. What song? Uh, closer. Closer. Of course. Oh, of course. Of course. Okay. Of and course. They made her, I didn't know. Maybe it was going to be <laughs> they like subtle. strapped her down to a big round leather bed in the middle of the floor. And then a guy did a- an aerial routine over her that she had to participate in yeah. sometimes. Well, he's like, so it. They he comes down like he's spinning around and stuff. First of all, it just feels like a dream because you're like lying down and you just have this man like spinning above you. There's not that much <laughs> contact for most of it. <laughs> no, it wasn't like you didn't get like grinded on. Very Did he much. drip on you, Emily? <laughs> no, I'm sorry, was but no. was there sweat dripping on you? And it's I know it's gross, but I just I my face. Molly was like looking at my face. I was so horrified. Was like, look at your face, but I've also seen pictures of you from college. <laughs> <laughs> hey, girl. <laughs> Um, no, there was no sweat. He was surprisingly dry. Uh, he, but there are these moments where he'll he'll like he, he came down and was like, okay, like grab onto my jacket and just pull, and then he would like, and then he would like lift himself up, and somehow his jacket would just like come off into my hands. So I was like, wow, I'm part of the trick. Uh, it was like you ripped his pants off, and then he would like fly away, <laughs> and then come back, and then at the end he like lifted Emily onto his lap. And then, like, they flew away together. <laughs> and there, there is video of this somewhere, but. Um, oh my or, God, it was the greatest I'm moment. so happy that didn't stay in Vegas, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, it was, I was incredible. Very, like, do you, you don't have to tell anyone about this. It's just for you. But, but I was then, like, there's nothing to did. be embarrassed of because all I did was just, like, lie there and enjoy the show. Yeah. <laughs> it was. It was amazing. Well, it was also like I was saying, it was like the pit and the pendulum. Like part of it was like, is he gonna fall on you? Yeah, it's suspenseful. <laughs> it's suspenseful. Um, but we we left and we were just like, I think we were all just in this like crazy euphoria because it was just the most like it was better than I think any of us could have imagined. The like aside from even me going on stage, just the entire in, in atmosphere and it was great. And just there were like a million women around. And they yeah. were all so happy. So yeah. we were also just. like... Like, because we hadn't seen any women all weekend, we were like, yay! I'm hungry for your sisters. It's like the end yeah. of the sci-fi movie. We found, like, the secret part of Logan's Run. Totally. I, I al- always do a Logan's Run uh, <laughs> metaphor, because it's the only metaphor. Uh, hey, guys, want to take another night call? Uh, yeah. This one comes from Darcy Wilder. Woo! Hello, guys. It's Darcy Wilder. Um, I saw a post on Instagram and I'm going to ask a few questions. I don't know exactly what t- is type you're looking for, but I have a few. How come when I um, pour tap water into a cup, it's cloudy? Um, did you guys go to Chuck E. Cheese's when you were kids and was there an animatronic band? Because I never saw one IRL and I think that would be cool. Um, what are you guys' skincare routines? And if you have, it's an exhausting conversation. I understand if you don't want to do that. Um, huh. Uh, all right. I hope you guys are doing well. Very, I'm a fan. Um, other questions. Uh, oh, they're all so boring. It's like, do you have you ever repotted a plant? Because like I need to repot a plant. Okay, bye. I love the lightning round from Darcy. Um, I feel <laughs> like we should just like all go around and answer all four questions. Oh yeah. <laughs> all right. Okay. Should we just start? Okay. Why is t- tap water cloudy when you pour it in a cup? I always thought it was because there are bubbles. Yes, bubbles. Because then like if you leave it long enough, it dissipates. But it is yeah. kind of weird. It aerates. Yeah. Is that yeah. does that happen in in LA? Because it definitely happens everywhere in New York. But oh yeah, for yeah. sure. I also think the tap water in New York is better than the tap water in LA. It is supposedly. It definitely yeah. is. Um, Maybe the cloudiness is like delicious fluoride. Um, the uh, the rookie move of the few people who move from LA to New York is that they have Brita pitchers, which is just like you don't need it. It's fine. Everything else okay. Well, we don't have the fluoride also because they thought that it was going to like allow communists to put messages into your brain. Mm. Well, to be fair, if you overdo it on the fluoride, your teeth turn brown. Really? Yes. 
Well, so don't drink don't. too much tap water. Yeah, it, well, it's just if you were getting like fluoride treatments using fluoridated tap water or you know, using fluoridated toothpaste and drinking a ton of tap water, you run the risk. Okay. Um, now, I don't remember any of the details about why we don't have fluoride in California tap water. I thought we still did. I think no, we, we do. don't. We don't. We're like the only really? place that doesn't, I think. I'm going to find out and okay. we'll tell okay. you next time. Follow Question up. Thanks, two. Question two. And I couldn't Chuck quite cheese. understand this. An animatronic ant? An animatronic... <laughs> Okay, so she asked if we had gone to Chuck E. Cheese's and if we had seen an animatronic. Because she never saw one in real life. Ant? But an animatronic, no, it would have been a, it would have been Charles. Charles? Entertainment Cheese. Yeah, Chuck E. Cheese. Charles Entertainment <laughs> Cheese is his name. Is his real, real full name. Um, but he's not animatronic. He's a man in a suit. No, there's animatronics. There is animatronics. Wow. I saw the animatronics. I was they at Chuck E. Cheese. Okay. No, that's what I was going to say. Okay. They got rid of the animatronics. Oh. But in the 80s, there were animatronics. So this oh. is the true, this okay. is the millennial, old millennial divide. But that's that. weird that they would have done, that now they're doing. They got rid of them because they were like expensive to repair. Yeah. And they were terrifying. Yeah. Emily, did you ever see them? I think so. I mean, this is the thing about Chuck E. Cheese is that it was such a like event place to go to that I did not form yeah. the bond around like whatever characters they tried to sell you on at Chuck E. Cheese the same way that you do even like a McDonald's. Like I definitely remember Grimace and the Hamburglar, but I couldn't tell you. I know that there were other characters that like populated the land of Chunky right. Ch- Chunky <laughs> Cheese, <laughs> Chuck E. Cheese, <laughs> but I don't remember them. Um, it's just Chuck E. Cheese, and then uh, he has like a band. And when it is someone's birthday, the band would like rise up on this platform. <gasps> I do out remember of the that. Yeah. See? Yeah. 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 yeah, you all remember okay, now that. There we go. Because you grew up in the eighties. <laughs> yep. And then uh my boyfriend who is from the South says they didn't have Chuck E. Cheese and instead they had Showbiz Pizza, which was like a ripoff of Chuck E. Cheese, mm. or maybe Chuck E. Cheese ripped off Showbiz Pizza, but it was the same idea where it's like an animatronic band like rises out. The rock of fire explosion. And then that guy made a documentary about it a little while ago Whoa. like where the guy like bought the whole band. Whoa. Um, we had a place locally in Tacoma, Washington. Shout out anybody from Tacoma uh, called Pizza and Pipes that had uh, a live <laughs> organist, like a huge organ that took up the entire room. And it was awesome. He could play. No. He could do any requests at all. That was where we always went after like softball oh, games. And stuff. Oh, we always went to Shakey's. I feel like I was just Shakey's talking pizza. about this. Yeah, oh, yeah we were talking about Shakey's and, and Vegas. Yeah, we were talking about where you go after the like the sports tournament, the like, yeah. soccer tournament right. trophy where they give you the participation trophy if you're a kid who's bad at sports. My whole thing growing up was we had we would go to the really shitty McDonald's where Ooh. Playland. Oh, but tell them about uh, Stu Leonard. Oh, Stu Leonard's. Do you know about Stu Leonard's, no, Emily? No. Stu Leonard's, I think it actually closed, but that was like the- This is like only real East Coast kids <laughs> window. <laughs> it was a destination grocery store, and I'm trying to remember if it was in like Montauk or New Jersey. It was in some like place that was a, a drive outside the city, and it was a grocery store with like, I mean, it was amazing. It had animatronic cows, what? animatronic chickens. Oh, yeah. And it was like the kind of place where you went and like the groceries all seemed really fancy and they were all like geared towards like it, it was like a bougie dream of like kids food. Like when you would buy eggs and you'd see like the animatronic chickens as if they were like laying the eggs that you would buy. Oh, that's so cool. That's yeah. Nuts. And they had like a lot of samples. But it was my favorite favorite place <laughs> and i think it closed a couple years ago but that was that was another big thing of like oh let's take like a weekend trip to this fun grocery oh, store that sounds like <laughs> but a it was dream. Fun. no that sounds it was great, great. Oh, like a themed awesome. grocery store that it was pretty like awesome a, a true dream um have you guys ever seen oh. uh the five nights at freddy's video game no uh it's they're making a movie of it it was popular with kids it's like a guy who made this video game and it's like the only video game he made it's like a homemade video game called five nights at freddy's and it's about you're the security guard at a pizza chain that is clearly Chuck E. cheese's is called <laughs> freddy's and it's the scariest game because the whole thing in the game is that it, you just have five surveillance cameras and you just click on the windows to see the different rooms <sighs> of the <laughs> you see the different rooms of the pizza place other than the security room that you're in and at a certain point in the night the animal animatronics come to life oh. and start walking towards the security room oh, man. and you have to make it through the night so you keep like clicking on the cameras to see how close they're getting and they just are like in these like scary positions in the scary surveillance rooms um and then they either get to you before the night is over and eat you 
or you make it through the night and then you have to do it for four more nights. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds horrible. And it's, the, it's great because it's like a weird, it's the weirdest gameplay. It's like so. Do they non- move slowly? You know, yeah, they don't. You don't see them move. You just see them when you click on the lights on. They like pause in ah. place. So they just—it's really frightening. And I think they've made like a bunch of sequels to the game that are all kind of the same, but with like more animatronics. Like, wow. But it's such a simple concept, and it's really—it's really scary. Um, and kids <laughs> love it. Like I, it's a thing that kids like. Um, Which is interesting because those kids never went to Chuck E. Cheese's. So yeah, it's not exactly. based on like nostalgia because the that fucking animatronic band was so scary. I'm, I, I they were so have, like, like very vague they were so rickety, you know. Even though they were like theoretically top of the line, there was something so off brand and kind of like uncanny valley about it. Um, that reminds me of the really scary show I watched on the plane to Las Vegas that was called Spy in the Wild. <laughs> Yeah. It was narrated by David Tennant, and it was like a BBC nature documentary, but it was about placing robot animals in animal packs to observe the animals. So they made like fake baby animals, but then they were so obviously robots. So they'd be panning across like African wolf pups, and then they get to this one wolf pup, and it's a <laughs> robot with a robot eye. Oh my God. Like a camera lens eye. And I, I couldn't get through it because I was so. It triggered some uncanny valley. Were the other animals just like, nope? No, the other animals like accepted it as they were like, they just think it's one of them. And you were like, nobody thinks it's one of them. There was one where it was like a crocodile, like picking up all the crocodile picks up all its uh, babies in its mouth to carry them to like the water. And it just kind of sees the robot one. It's like, oh, whatever. (laughs) Crunch. Oh, my God. (laughs) I'll take you. But it was Uh, so it was. Yeah, yeah, sorry. Um, <laughs> we should move on to Darcy's last couple questions. Uh, skincare what are, what routines. Are your- I, I do actually plead that that's too exhausting for me to get into. And I also don't want to run the risk of like <laughs> plugging. Um, hey, if anybody wants us to recommend their skincare line, just send me send me the free stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's all I'll ask is how many steps? How many steps? Uh, one, two... Three, three. Nothing, nothing okay, crazy. That's about many. Yeah. How about you, Tess? I'm at two. Yeah, yeah. What about you? I'm probably at two. I yeah, can't yeah. get with the ten step. No, too no, many no, steps. No. I, yeah, I can't. But I, I do have to say that occasionally I add a mask, so then I'm bordering on three. Yeah. Hey, Tess, you will know the answer to the repotting of plants. Oh, I question. fucking love plants. It's crazy how much. I, recently, I've loved plants even more because I, I realized that um. Those like figs that are in all of their in every like interiors magazine and stuff. And they're described as looking like babies. They have the broad um, rounded leaves and they're a kind of uh, fig, but they don't bear fruit. But you can take one of the leaves off those things, put it in um, a glass of water and give it like it takes a long time, like six to eight weeks. And then as soon as it will sprout roots and then you can repot it. But those plants are expensive. And they're beautiful. And so I just did that. But yeah, repotting Tess plants. Tess just learned yeah. about taking clippings and making plants. Well, no, oh, yeah. I'd done it for a while, but I'd never done it. Like, I, I hadn't done it with green onions, and I didn't know that you could do it with um, with trees. I didn't have but, any. I tried to do it with green can. onions recently, and I, I couldn't I couldn't get it to work. I don't know what you the deal make, was, was, but... I put mine getting northeast light, and I found that that helped. <laughs> no, but it's for real, because with orchids, too, you need to get the north or the east light, I think, is that's the only way Such I can a make Capricorn. Grow. Wow. I know. I was literally yeah, getting the southwest plants, light, so this explains, <laughs> explains everything. Hey, great question, Darcy. Yeah. yeah, great series of questions, Darcy. Thank you for uh, calling in. Yeah, Appreciate Darcy, it. come on night call. Yeah, Darcy, yeah. come on night call. <laughs> <laughs> so, guys, uh, I don't know about you, but I am deleting my Facebook. <laughs> yeah, I haven't been signed in for a while, but I was very impressed that you were actually deleting it. Yeah. Tess, where's, what's, what's your status? Dude, I don't care. I mean, honestly, <laughs> I'm sorry. Like, I, I believe that all of these... I, so we're bringing this up because of the data breach. Yeah. Well, um, <clears throat> which, which to be technically clear, is not a breach, but only because breach? Facebook's security with information is, like, so lax and terrible that it didn't, like, qualify as a breach for them because, like... You can find out so much about people on Facebook without technically violating any of their security rules. Right. So <laughs> there's that. Uh, but yeah, the, go ahead though. This this breach, uh, this uh, the Cambridge Analytica um, story that came out uh, in the Guardian and the New York Times. Um, and that data was used by the the Mercer and Bannon think tank, right? Mm-hmm. That then 
yeah, like that they used gave, it for nefarious purposes. Well, they also like they, you they know, did it through a of, quiz. They, it was like, they did it through a quiz, and they gave it like an Anglo, you know, tell there for white nationalists. They gave yeah. it like a real Anglophone name that mm-hmm. would make idiots be like, "Oh, a trusted source, right. the Cambridge Analytica." I've heard of Cambridge, uh, <laughs> uh. <laughs> but I think what it really comes down to with all this stuff that you know in terms of the legality of it is so hazy because it's so new. Um, the idea that we've like let all this stuff happen and now we have to roll it back and regulate it seems like pretty hard to do. Like kind of like spilled it all the over the that, floor already. I mean, I think the thing that's so insane that was only like banned from Facebook as of like 2015 was that when, you know, you, you, get, you, you, sign up for some app or service or something that uses your Facebook profile. And then they ask, you know, uh, can we look at your, your, uh, your friends list or your, uh, your information on your about you or your likes and all that stuff. And um, for a very, very long time, like it was totally fair game to use, like have in um, among those permissions be to like, look at the profiles of your friends. So like, even if you personally were not going to give permission to an app, to you know look at your information one of any of your friends could do that and then it like who cares like you're still you're still being used for that purpose i mean i don't know i i kind of early on have had a policy i do not like things on facebook so i try to like make it very hard for it to know how to target me because i just don't have any right. likes i know people who like everything so that they get like the weirdest mix possible of stuff yeah um, i'm a big liker yeah they like to like stuff that they don't like in order to see what like someone else might get from their feed <laughs> so they get all this weird like all right meme stuff because oh, they want to see what those people's feeds look like yeah i mean i think that okay so that's what the deal is with this stuff is you know did it influence the election and my feeling about it is like there's this group of people that are like still looking for this authoritarian out from the reality that we live in now. Yeah. You know, right. who are like, Mueller's going to fix it or like, we're going to sue Facebook and that's going to fix it. You know, like we're going to put the genie back in the bottle, which is just like, no, we clearly can't do that. And if these people were making memes and fake accounts and all this shit, all this like cyber, you know, seeding stuff that they were definitely doing. Uh, but they were stoking, you know, you can't stoke racism that isn't already there. That's, yeah. You know, like America was having already like a crisis of escalating police violence that like was an easy thing for people to prey on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But, but a, a lot of that is also the thing we always talk about, like, you know, the, like, like make Nazis scared again. Like, like I think a lot of that, that meme stuff can make people feel the permission to like, exercise and bully like people that they wouldn't normally feel like because they would feel more alone in their beliefs and then you like see enough memes on the internet and you're like hey more people think the way i do and i think that that right. gives you much more of a like pass well these people found their community i mean like jay kang was tweeting about this today what up jay kang come on i call hi uh <laughs> uh and he was saying too that yeah it's like these this is a place for alienated white men on the internet they fe- you know they knew that there were all these white men who felt forgotten or whatever um young and old who were like the world is changing in ways that don't benefit me and that they could find like a community online of people that were like fuck everyone else except us like let's torture them all (laughs) yeah uh and you know you were saying also that like 4chan in japan also turned into like a nationalist oh yeah like like, long ago you know yeah Right, which is also like again, kind of off last week's episode. Like that's not what we thought the internet was going to do. Right. Well, I think. And when you, th- oh, go ahead. Oh no, go ahead. Well, I, I think the thing that's like also like more of a macro thing, and in, in looking at the story, is just how it only took one eight year cycle to go from like, wow, the first presidency that was won with Facebook, to like, oh god, the second presidency that was won with Facebook. It's just like because there was so much optimism about, and like this has also been brought up too. Like the Obama campaign used a lot of a lot of like you know information collecting apps but there was much more uh transparency uh, with those and it was like not it was like you know direct like you were giving yeah and like what is that shepherd fairy poster if not like a meme totally right? yeah it's just like there there is a there is a, a way for all of these you know supposedly good and powerful uh currents to be uh used for ill well if it's powerful it can be used in both directions yeah. that seems yeah. really obvious yeah. i also find the political discourse on facebook is um it, it's 
it seems as though people like lead with their pain a lot mm-hmm. in a way that they don't on Twitter and Instagram. And I'm guessing that's because it's older people. Um, but I think that and I'm, it's just like more text based. It's like a good place yeah. for like a long yeah. range. I mean, well, it's also family members are, are often like the disagreements that I see on Facebook are often between family members, like, you know, a younger person and then maybe an aunt or an uh-huh. uncle or, you know, grandparent or whatever. And I think it, it's given me, I mean, Granted, like, I'm not, I'm among the people who are not big fans of um, news outlets giving a voice to the same conservative people over and over to make the same conservative points about why they voted for Donald Trump. I I, I wanted to listen the first time, and then I and then, did not anymore. Well, it's starting to be like, the same story over and over and over again. Exactly. I, I like watching the debate, though, right. between those people, because I do feel like I get very isolated and indignant, in my opinion, and seeing kind of like... You know, being a voyeur and other people's politically based family dramas gives right. me a really I, I feel like it's a healthier insight into how people are negotiating their politics now. And like if they can find a middle ground, which often they can't. It's like a civil war thing. Exactly. Where you have like families divided by yeah. that stuff. And, like- and you don't see on Twitter. I mean, I feel like you're you're getting a younger demographic that's um, mostly interacting among people who don't know each other or they know each other from work. Like they're both political writers or you know working in the same field and they're having an argument but you don't often see people online having these fights amongst themselves that really kind of could be had on the phone but for some reason they're happening on someone's wall well and i think it's i think it's fascinating well i think the thing you said about people coming on facebook and leading with their pain is like so true and like even outside of the context of a political campaign or like a an election season, like when I was, so I'm, I'm deleting everything and I'm kind of going back and looking at, cause I archived everything just for my own personal information and just like realizing how the most active I ever was on Facebook. And I was never like super active on it, but was definitely when I was like the most, like having the most problems and was like yeah. the saddest and wanted to go on and just like demonstrate my sadness to like all my friends, which I'm sure was super fun for all of them. But did, like, it, did it help? I no. mean, did you find it? No, I felt, no. I always felt but it was really... new. It was like a new way to do that. Yeah. Yeah. And I think everybody of our generation that was like the inner, you know, the pioneers of using social media and getting it right when it first started, you know, that we've all gone through this cycle of being like, yeah, my parents thought it was scary to like talk to people on the internet, but like we're beyond that now. Yeah. <laughs> and, but again, I think there's just like all these ways in which it does overlap with real life that we're still coming to terms with. And yeah. this is a big one of them is like, hey, something that happened on the internet totally influenced things that yeah. happened in real life. So it's not just this like repository where you put all your like dark energy. No, it's and, you know, attention seeking. It like, can have real life consequences. Yeah, there's no, it's like, yeah, there's no divider anymore between like your IM chats and <laughs> seeing people. I have to life. say too, in, in other defenses of Facebook, which I totally agree needs to be held accountable for the data. I mean, the data breach is terrible and I, and I think it does need to be held accountable, but I can't ditch my account also because I have been playing Scrabble oh, yeah. on that thing oh, my God. <laughs> for 13 right. years. But that Scrabble app has no doubt been like scraping uh, your information. You know what's awesome? Oh, yeah. It's like it can actual have it. Scrabble. It can have it all. <laughs> no, I have. But I, I play the same three. I've been playing the same three people uh, who are friends from college. Um, and I've been playing them for so long. And it's like, I just can't cut that cord. And then the other thing is like, I have to say, I have a secret mom's group on Facebook that oh, yeah. I can't People divorce myself People participating communities on Facebook. I mean... That's my feeling too, though, is, is like they're all evil. There's a lot of other evil companies that we're all like entangled with. For uh, sure. Ralph's Club. And, you know, but quitting one won't be Facebook, Ralph's though, Club. has not like, and I, I, it's easier for me to quit than I think for a lot of other people because, but Facebook does have the way, like, it, it has, right. it can have multiple tentacles around different portions right. of your life. I just feel, and I feel like with this story specifically, what I'm afraid of happening with people rallying around it with like ne- the neoliberal take on it is like, we'll send Mark. Zuckerberg to jail and then everything will be fine. I don't fine, think that's you know? what the idea is. I think it's like we need to have a lot more regulation over this tool that everybody right, like, that is in we, everybody's life. How? Why didn't we talk about that like when we started? Well, because, <laughs> because, because too this, everybody now. was just so like when there's a when there's a 
um, when there's a Democrat in, in the presidency, then we're all like, oh, all of the big businesses are good and fine. And they're like working in our favor. Like that was how we were right, operating for years. But that was never years years. true. Yeah. Um, I mean, and now we kind of have the wool pulled from our eyes in a way. And we realize, oh, no, they were always just working in their own interests. And yeah. Well, I mean, we all saw the social network. <laughs> like all those guys are evil. Yeah. But like, you know? but they were played by Justin Timberlake. Rare- so it was fun. Uh <laughs> Well, I mean, I think also, like, there is a thing about movies like The Social Network and Wall Street and Wolf of Wall Street that enforce this idea that, like, you have to be ruthless, you have to be an evil, unempathetic person to succeed. And I don't think that's true. I think we should, especially given, you know, the political climate now, I think we're all seeing, like, oh, maybe actually, like, letting narcissistic sociopaths like rise to the top of every field is like a terrible idea well once we can legislate and that will be on a really good path when we can ban assholes <laughs> uh, well we should probably call it a show this has been a long call one it a night packed with yeah call it a night guys i'm trying to start a new end of our show sign off <laughs> let's call it a let's night let's call it a night let's hit the road girls and call it a night uh, <laughs> i love it um gotta go back to las vegas yeah Thank you all for listening. As always, you can leave us a night call at one two four zero four six night or an email at nightcallpodcast at gmail.com. Be sure to subscribe to us if you haven't already. I don't know what you're waiting for, but you definitely should. And leave us a reading and a review. We would really appreciate it. Um, you can also follow us on Twitter at nightcallpod and on Facebook at Night Paul Cod Podcast if you are still on Facebook by the time you're listening to this. Um, and yeah, thank you for listening. This. Hey, what about the Instagram? Oh, and the Instagram. <laughs> Can't forget the Instagram. <laughs> Not to reveal who runs for the <laughs> Oh, so, I, I should say that thank you to the night caller who wrote in that uh, you had figured out who, which of us ran for real? each social media account. <laughs> We're going to switch at some point yeah. just to confuse you. We'll swap yeah. out. <laughs> Um, it's but a cup game. It is Night Call Podcast on Instagram. Also owned by Mark Zuckerberg, but who cares? Who's keeping track, really? Um, <laughs> Who's keeping score? Uh, all right, we'll see everybody next week. It's been Night Call. <laughs> Bye.